Hello everyone and welcome to Linux Ubuntu and Docker Tutorials. In this tutorial we explain how to properly install Docker Engine on Linux Ubuntu. This tutorial is designed for people who are relatively new to Linux Ubuntu and Docker. However, we believe that this tutorial might also be useful to more experienced Linux Ubuntu users. So let's first explain one very important thing. There are two possibilities for installing and running Docker on Linux Ubuntu. The first possibility is to install and run Docker Engine. Docker Engine should be completely free. It is released under the Apache License 2.0. Docker Engine is simple to use and you can run it from the command line. The second possibility is to install and run Docker Desktop. Docker Desktop is a full graphics user interface for running and configuring Docker containers. It might be free for personal use and learning, otherwise you might need to pay the license for using it in a commercial setting. My suggestion to everyone is to start with Docker Engine and then if you need additional capabilities, run and install Docker Desktop. Consequently, in this tutorial, I will explain how to install Docker Engine on Ubuntu. Okay, let's start. First of all, open Google and search for install Docker Engine on Ubuntu and click on the first link. You will be directed to this official page that contains the installation instructions. Okay, although these installation instructions might look straightforward, they are actually not. So let's go over these instructions and let's verify all the requirements. First of all, in order to run Docker Engine, you need to have Ubuntu 20.04 or Ubuntu 22.04 or Ubuntu 24.04. Consequently, let's verify that you have the correct Linux Ubuntu version. To do that, click here and search for terminal. And then over here in the terminal, type this command, lsb underscore release and dash a. And over here, you can see that I'm running Ubuntu 24.04. Consequently, the requirements are satisfied. The next step is to install all, to uninstall old version. Namely, it might happen that someone played with your computer previously or you installed a program that required Docker and it's always a good idea to do clean install. Consequently, let's learn how to uninstall the previous versions of Docker. Okay, so what do, you what do they suggest over here is to run this small script which is actually compressed in a single line and this line will actually try to uninstall all these packages. So you can see it's a cute for loop, do sudo apt get remove package, and then here you define what you want to remove. So let's copy this and let's paste it over here. And most likely nothing will happen in my case since I don't have Docker installed on my system as you can see over here, good. Now, before we continue, we need to verify one additional thing. Namely, there might be some artifacts in this folder. So let's copy this command and let's navigate to that folder by copying the past and doing cd. And if you see no such file or directory, this, this means that you don't have Docker on your system and you can continue with installation. Okay, now go to installation methods and over here you can see several suggested installation methods. Here they are saying Docker Engine comes bundled with Docker Desktop for Linux. As I mentioned previously, we are not going to install Docker Desktop for Linux. We are just going to install a simple Docker Engine that can be executed from command line. So what we need to select is this option, Docker's apt repository. Good, so let's click here and you will be directed to this section. And over here, you need to execute these commands. So let's start from scratch. First of all, they suggest to do sudo apt-get update. However, I suggest you that after this command, you always do sudo apt-get upgrade. So let's click here and let me now actually 
minimize the screen such that you can see what I'm typing. Okay, so let's do this. sudo apt get update and then over here I will type sudo apt get upgrade to update and upgrade all the packages. And now this might take some time. If you didn't run update and upgrade for some time, then press yes. And now you can see even here that my Linux firmware is being updated, which is really interesting, as well as some other packages. Okay, so be patient over here and wait until these commands are executed. Next, we need to install CA certificates and curl. Curl is a very powerful tool for downloading files. As you can see over here, I already have curl. However, in your case, you might see that curl is being installed. Next, let's set up these key rings. And then let's do the curl and let's specify the address. And then finally, let's set the executable rights to this file. And then we need to add the repository to apt sources. So let me expand this and let's explain what's happening over here. Now, this is actually one command that spans one, two, three, four lines over here. Let's now copy everything that is from here until here. Or actually not, you should be very careful. No, you can actually do in a single line. Let's do this. And then let's paste this and let's execute. Okay, good. And finally, let's do update once more. And that's it. Okay. And then finally, you can install the Docker packages. So to install Docker packages, you need to run this command. And let's analyze what's written over here. Don't just blindly copy and paste commands. Try to see what's written over here. You can see that there are a number of packages. And actually, there might be even let me see over here. Yes, so over here they will they will give you a few additional options which we'll, we will not use. And my suggestion to you is actually to read a little bit more about these packages, what they are and what do they do. So let's copy this command here and here it is. You see here that you will need around 500 megabytes on your computer and let's press yes. And this should install Docker on your system. Okay. Next step is to verify the installation. Over here, they say that you should run this hello world example, but however, before running this hello world, let's try to run this sudo docker info. And let's run this command. And if everything is properly installed, you should actually see all the details. You should see the version, you should see the context, you should see the path where all the files are, etc. And you can see the server. Now, here is one very, very important thing. Look what I wrote here, sudo docker info. How about writing just docker info? And let's see what happens. Error, permission design, denied. So why is that? Well, by default, when you restart your computer, docker will run. However, it will run as a root user. That is, you always need to run sudo docker info or sudo whatever it is. That is, if you want to invoke docker, you need to do it with sudo. That is with super user root access. And this is very important. Good. Next, you can set up or run the hello world example. So just type sudo docker run hello world and let's see what happens over here. Hello from Docker. This message shows that your installation appears to be working correctly. And let's see what happened over here. Unable to find image. Hello world. Latest locally. Latest pulling, pulling from library. Hello world. So you pulled or downloaded. So you can see this digest number and status downloaded newer image for the hello world latest. And you can see that we were able to run the hello world example. Now, 
Over here, they suggest to do some Linux post install configuration. So let's click here and you will be directed to this web page. And let's read what's written over here. The Docker daemon binds to a Unix socket, not a TCP port. By default, it's the root user that owns the Unix socket and the other user can only access it using sudo. So that's why you need to run Docker by using sudo. If you don't want to preface the Docker command with sudo, create a Unix group called Docker and you and user to it. So the idea over here is to modify your privileges and to make sure that a user can be can execute Docker by just writing Docker. So I don't suggest you that you do that since if you're the only person using your computer, just type sudo. It really doesn't matter. Okay, that's all for today and thanks for watching.